from St. Francis School of Education. And uh, thereafter, I did my graduation law from the Bangladesh University. And uh, then I did my master's from Maharaj University. Amritsar, uh, uh, it's a very holy city and uh, it has a historical importance because it has uh, many of uh, um, places of historical importance like Golden Temple, then we have Jalya Harapa, Bangla Border, Nandi University, Khalsa College, and there are many other historical places. There are three parts of the town. Which area of the front Sir, it falls in much higher. Much higher. When was the constitution adopted? Sir, the constitution was adopted on 26 November 1949. Yes, sir. sir, but the enforcement of the same, some of the provisions were enforced on the same day, but uh, the rest of it, it, they were enforced on 26th of January 1950. Yes. What is the decree? Sir, uh, decree, it is according to section 2, clause 2 of the CPC. Uh, it is a formal adjudication of a dispute whereby the that is deciding that matter, it conclusively determines the rights of the parties. What is the res judicata? Sir, res judicata according to section 11 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1908. Uh, it is uh, the it, whenever a court has already decided a matter conclusively, then it is a kind of, uh, uh, we can say, a prohibition on the trial of the same matter again. Sir, estoppel, uh, it is uh, the prohibition on the parties when they have, uh, uh, initially they had made a statement or given some evidence or something like that, then uh, the parties are stopped from again uh, taking up the same matter or from denying the things they have uh, already asserted. Yes, sir, definitely. So since like we have uh, from the very beginning, we have a uniform criminal code, uh, criminal code in place. Now the time has come like all the personal laws, they should also be uh, uniform, uh, there should be uniformity in them also in order to ensure equality and to uh, obviously that is also uh, one of the, we can say a fundamental right in the constitution. So that would be giving actually a practical aspect to the uh, fact of uh, the fundamental rights of the constitution. So to be different, the religious ceremony is required for marriage and succession and inheritance. Sir, uh, the thing is, when UCC will be implemented, it will not be actually affecting the actual the typical religious rites. Like uh, if we are, like in sex, we are going for an encourage for marriage, and Muslim are going for nikah and Christian also. Now the UCC will not say that we are supposed to go for nikah or like that. It will just say that uh, it is going to make mandatory the registration of marriage, and that would be uniformly applicable on, on all that. So it is not on the religious front. Registration of marriage, UCC is required. No, sir, it, it, it was just an example, uh, not the whole thing. Sir, uh, it's like, uh, here are successful laws whereby uh, many of the first laws, they are differentiating uh, between men and the women with respect to rights. Uh, like, for example, in Muslims, we have, like, women have been given half of the children as compared to the male counterparts. So that can be, uh, that can be given a uniformity. But all our laws are respecting and recognizing the customs. Yes, sir. Sir, the thing is, the customs will... Yes. Sir, the typical customs will, will not be affected, but where there is uh, like... UCC about customs are not to be affected, marriage is not to be affected, succession is not to be affected, what is UCC there? So the thing is, we have to bring in uniformity on the like... So in what like we have uh, the differences that have been there with respect to uh, the difference between men and women rights that can be uniform... Uh, uh, <laughs> So these are the basic rights that we affected, like uh, if we have this, uh, the biogamy, the polygamy problem, that could be solved with it, that that would be actually giving uh, the, it will be upholding the rights of the women. And what about medical rape? Should it be criminalized? Sir, uh, it should be because like uh, the same offense, we, we should not discriminate, uh, be, uh, we, we should not victimize a woman just because of her marital status. Like, we are making rape as an offense with respect to unmarried women. And at the same time, we are not making it an offense for... Uh, okay. You want to suggest that we should not differentiate between your wife and any other woman?
that is what practically means practically it means that it would, it would amount to like taking consent for every time like uh, and uh, that would actually uh, give rise to more of matrimonial dispute yes <laughs> yes sir <laughs> yes sir. yeah so that would actually give rise to more problems it is not uh, sir uh, i would like to suggest like it should not be more of a sexual abuse kind of thing and it can be uh, like it is not like we are saying that we have to take a sanction or application for the same like they can be like implied consent of thing but it should not be a sex that you are doing correctly there is implied consent so to say criminalizing Some safeguards you have in mind, or sir, safeguards like, as in it should not be a, a sexual abuse kind of thing where the uh, where the things get uh, violent. That could be criminalized, like we have already in domestic violence act. Can offence of rape be committed in case of a dead woman? Sir, there is some concept, but I'm I'm not able to recall it right now. No, it cannot. It will amount to a offence under a separate section, that is 297, not offence of rape. Okay, Can third agenda commit a rape? Yes, sir. So within the definition of uh, section 375, it is like. Uh, but the word used is a man over there but the th uh, third gender is uh, does not fall within the definition of a man like, typically a male human being what how we can find out that he is a third gender because only when you go that it is a third gender then this question comes whether he can commit rape or rape can be committed with regard to that Third agenda, that is at the time of birth. What gender has been? Given? Gender is given, whether it's the male or female. He becomes third gender only after getting some maturity. When he starts showing uh, uh, orientation towards a different uh, sex, which was originally given to uh, that person at time of birth. So if it is a female gender, third gender, female, then rape can be committed against her. If it is a male, third gender, he can commit rape. So it Sir, depends on what status he has at the time of birth. If it actually, is a male, I, I, then then he can commit. If it is a female, then it can be committed against her. I was actually thinking about the uh, point from Unix part, like hij hijras. I was uh, thinking about them. Like I thought, like hijras. Actually, actually yes. I'm, 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 I would like to continue from uh, where yes. I started. Tell me the landmark judgment wherein third gender was recognized by Honorable Supreme Court. Uh, uh, it was a National Legal Services Authority's judgment, I suppose. I'm not sure. There is a special act passed giving so, right to them. So yes, sir. So, this Transgenders Persons Act, they are being provided rights over there. What kind of sections have they been recognized by the Supreme Court? Are they weaker sections? Do they deserve reservations as a kind of affirmative action from the state? Sir, uh, they are like in that particular judgment. It was recognized that they should be uh, they, they they should be given uh, specific uh, reservations also. Like uh, in every like we do full forms. And they, uh, initially there was just man uh, or women, and now it's been like third gender columns are also been there. Then they are uh, also in jobs and in the educational upfront. They are being given reservations. Then uh, all these like they are so they, they has to be a uh, separate washrooms for them. You now in the act itself, they mentioned that they do have a right to residence also. If they want to stay like in their parents' home, they can. As per that. Yes, sir. Okay, you referred to about the National Legal Services Authority judgment. Can you tell me, uh, you know, under what uh, act does this National Legal Services Authority has been established in India? Sir, I suppose it is the same. The name of the act is also so the national. Which act? This authority has been established. So the National Legal Services Authority is acting. Tell me the year. So I don't know the year. So, uh, in pursuance of what uh, you know, uh, interpretation of the Constitution, this act has been enacted. Any provisions somewhere in the Constitution? 
it is under article 39 article 39a which says that three legal services have to be provided to the ones who are not able to represent themselves 39a small a capital a capital introduced by which amendment so it was introduced uh, by 42nd amendment of 1976 okay so uh, see it is said that the main function of judiciary is to uphold rule of law is yes. that correct Can you tell me what is the biggest threat to rule of law in the present circumstances, even in uh, you know, let's say throughout the world, even in India as well, which is the greatest threat to rule of law? Uh, threat to rule of law. So I could not specify it. Thank you. Um, it is like burden of proof is when a party has to prove a fact. Like according to section one zero one and one zero two, we have like uh, in case of plaintiffs and defendants who are to supposed to prove. Then once a party has proved certain fact, then the burden lies on the another party. And uh, reverse burden, I suppose, like the sh that the act of social economic in case of social economic offences, whereby we uh, presume the guilt of accused person. Otherwise, the general rule is that we presume innocence of accused person until he is proven. And uh, in case of reverse burden of proof, might be it is like when the person, uh, like in case of NDPS or OXO, we are presuming his guilt, and he has to prove the same. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I I don't know. Ma'am, false is in you know for, uh, false is in omnibus means uh, something which is false in one aspect has to be false in whole of the aspect. Now this is not a rule of law that's been accepted in India. Means if a person's evidence or testimony is uh, it is false in one respect, then that is not that whole of his testimony has to be discarded. It can be given a certain uh, in a Can be given certain weightage if it is being corroborated by other evidences. What is the difference between testimony of a witness and confession of a co-accused? Uh, could you please repeat the question? Could you please repeat the question? So, um, ma'am, testimony of a complainant. Like, uh, we have a uh, section one thirty three of the Indian Evidence Act, which says that if an accomplice has given some evidence, now that can be relied upon without corroboration. In case of confession of co-accused, that is under section thirty uh, of the Indian Evidence Act, we say that whereby the uh, the two persons are being uh, held in, uh, they are being given joint trial for the same offence. Then, in that case, uh, the confession of co-accused could be uh, relied upon for the purpose of uh, conviction of the other accused. Okay, and no other difference. I could not like, specify that. Okay, what is compulsive bail? Yes, sir. Tell me the importance of Amrit sir. Sir, Amrit sir. Tell five names. Uh, five top names. Ah, uh, sir, Akal Tak Sahib, Shri Akal Tak Sahib, Ah, uh, Shri Kesar Sahib, Ah, uh, Shri. Was uh, domestic violence or social legal study? So, according to uh, you, what is the conclusion with regard whether the revenge should be given a uh, equal status as that to the marriage? Uh, sir, as was held in uh, by the Honorable Supreme Court in the Velosami v. D. Pachyamal case, that. Every kind of living should not be recognized as a marital, like as a marital relationship. It should they 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 uh, kind of set up certain guidelines for uh, recognizing what kind of uh, relationship should be included. Like they should have stayed together for a continuous period of time. The society should have perceived them as husband and wife. Is equal to marriage or not? 
sir they should be given like uh, now sir, sir. Given. yes sir so i'm not sure sir Sir, according to the same. Already, one of the persons is already married. Sir, uh, if we go by the judgment of this Valuswami, it says that if the children they are, uh, who are born out of a living relationship, uh, they are legitimate. And, uh, they are supposed to inherit all. Sir, if they uh, fulfill the criteria that's been laid down in the judgment. They will uh, follow the section sixteen of the judgment also. Yes, sir. Sir, they will. So, for uh, so legitimacy of children out of void and voidable marriages. <laughs> that is not a marriage at all. It is. It is not a marriage actually. Living. Sir. Why? Like, uh, sir, is not that beautiful. Uh, no, 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 not like that. But, uh, sir, it ja... makes the difference from which side of the you are. Yes. So you should feel relaxed. Yes, you know? Actually, this is my consistent problem. It's like, not I'm not able to uh, give, like, I try to, when I, uh, before entering, I am like fully prepared that I have to give a little smile, but when I am here, I am not able to do that. You have to work on it. Because it gives the uh, impression that either you are not fully prepared or you are not uh, confident about the answers you are giving. Yes. So you have to wipe out this uh, stress from your face. Right? You want only pay you know, the importance of that and all that. And there is a place called Ram and then we have Vaga border. Yes, sir. These are also important pieces yes, in or around the, the, the okay. square car. Yes, sir. Supplies milk to the entire uh, vicinity. Yes, yes. Every day, right? How many getting into that? Did I go? Uh, I don't know, sir. Did you bring it? Uh, sir, it is three, I think. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, like this, sir. Like you have any stress in your body, you reflect on your body. And you have to keep a smile on your face. There are some basic structures in the judgment. There are some basic appointments. There are some narcotics tests. There are some DMs. There are some information technology. There are some judgments. And you have to work on your stress. All the best. So, like, I can keep my hands like this also, so like I'm more comfortable like Relax, you keep your hands like this, but relax. If you do it, you will be able to do it. Yes, sir. Then you will be able to stress your stress. Sir, so, I have asked you, the color of the dress is okay? Like, this is my final... Yes, uh, it is okay. And one thing like, Andrew, sir, so, jo wish to wish you, sir, sir, okay, I mean, if I have a ma'am, I have to say, so, good morning, ma'am, what do you think? So, all of you, मतलब कि इंडिविजुअली करनी है मतलब कलेक्टिवली यस बहुत तो ही ओके आज तक एक ही होगी एक ही होगी आठ बार बनोगे एक ही गुड मॉर्निंग का भी है ना एंड सर जब मैं इसमें फाइल वगैरह कैरी करनी कोई जरूरी है ना जल्दी नहीं कर पाते वेरिफिकेशन आज ऑलरेडी बीन डाल 
but like we are supposed to take the documents over there also